It is time for the Pilot Custom Heritage. Eight, two, three. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today we are finally going to be talking about the Pilot Custom 823 Fountain Pen. Uh, this is a pen that I have purposefully been waiting uh, to talk about in my years later review because when I first started this series, uh, it was pretty pilot heavy. And this was going to be the one that I did third, but I was like, I can't do three pilots back to back. Like, that's just bananas. So I purposefully talked about a bunch before I could finally get to the 823. Because if anyone knows me, <laughs> you know that this is one of my all-time favorite fountain pens. And so you know this is going to be a pretty positive review. There's really only one thing that is flawed with this pen. <laughs> uh, but I own two. So the amber one here is the first one that I purchased. And fun fact, the first A23 I actually ever used was not mine. Uh, it was lent to me um, and it had a fine nib. I decided to purchase a medium um, and I have a fine nib on this one. <laughs> uh, but I loved it so stinking much that I bought my own. Um, I've had this for many years now and I believe I've now had this custom smoke for two years now. One guaranteed, but I'm pretty sure two now. Um, and I got a fine nib on this one. I mean, look at the nibs. They're just so stinking cute. There's nothing like super fancy about it. They're just really cute. <laughs> so the AT3 has the Pilot Custom, uh, or sorry, the Pilot number 15 size nib, which is pretty close to what like a traditional number six size nib looks like. Um, so if I pull out my Benu Talisman, this has a Schmidt number six size nib, and then this is the Pilot. So their number 15 size is basically a number six, ever so slightly bigger maybe, but like basically in like common terms, <laughs> it's a number six size nib. Um, so it's nothing too, too large, but you don't get it on many of their pens. <laughs> um, so I like the size of the nib. It comes with a plastic feed. Uh, I really like Pilot feeds. Uh, they're really easy to clean. They generally have a good ink flow. Um, and I just, I don't know. I think they're cute. It's weird to think that a feed, like something plastic could be cute, but it is. <laughs> Um, again, as with all of these years later, um, there are plenty of reviews uh, that I've done in the past if you want to get like super, super detailed about it. Uh, these videos are pretty much just how I feel about it and how I feel is amazing. Um, I love that the like black fill-in of the um, engraved spots here have held up over time. Kind of a cigar shaped body here for the vacuum fill, which is funny because like vacuum fills typically um, I don't care for because they're usually bulky and heavy and a pain in the butt to clean. Um, but the pilot ones really aren't. And I just I don't have a problem with it I really really don't and it's so smooth and it's that way on both pens um, I've never had to grease these either although I will say when I got this one <laughs> and use this I definitely do feel a difference in the one that I've been using for many 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 years now uh, and one that's newer but this still feels really smooth to me until I use this and then I'm like, oh shoot. <laughs> this is like super, super smooth. Um, I love the way that it feels in my hand. This rod does add some weight uh, and it does have a little bit in the back, but it, it's perfectly balanced for me. Um, my thumb does rest on the th uh, threads, 
but it's super, super smooth um, because it's on like the super meaty, fleshy part of my thumb. So you really don't feel it. I have used this pen. I'm not even kidding you guys. I once wrote like a two hour journal session, not all one on one on one. Like sometimes I'll have an episode of TV or something or a movie playing. And so like I'll stop, you know, when I'm, I'm about to turn the page for a few minutes kind of thing. So it's not like literally constant two hours, but I, I, it's, I have written probably like a novel worth of content with this pen. Um, and it is absolutely fantastic. I never post it. You can, but it is back weighted for me at that point. Um, it's just too much, but you definitely can if you like to post or if you have bigger hands. Um, it's so, so, so smooth. I absolutely love it. I love the color. It's a little warmer than what it shows up on my camera, but I absolutely love it. It makes me feel, you know what? Here's the thing. The reason why I love this pen probably so much is because it makes me feel comforted. Like, it's sort of like when you have, you know, like the, the perfect cup of coffee, whether that's a black cup of coffee, a latte, however you prefer your comfort coffee or your comfort beverage or whatever it is, like, like that's what this pen gives me the feeling of. It makes me feel like I'm at the cottage by a roaring fire during the holidays. Um, you know, I've got my perfect beverage with me. I've got my family around me. I got a, a you know, cozy blanket. Um, you know, like just no stress in the world. Like that's what this pen gives me the feeling of. And I can't tell you why over anything else because even this one gives me that. This one does it more. Uh, and I don't know if it's because it's brown. I don't know if it's because of the, it's the first one I have. This one gives me that feeling too when I write. But I prefer the medium nib over the fine nib. So maybe that's why it, it does that more. But I just, I, 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 I'm literally stumbling over my words because I cannot tell you why. And I know that that's probably frustrating for you. But it's just how it makes me feel. And that's why it's one of my all-time favorites, um, because it just makes me feel good. <laughs> and when I write with it, it makes me feel good, and it makes me want to write more. Um, and I think that that's so special. Now, I did mention there's one thing I don't like about this pen, uh, and that would be it has like a crack here in the cap, but it's not like a proper crack if that makes sense so like you can see it doesn't go all the way through and like if you look here like you can't even see on the end so like it doesn't go all the way through and it doesn't cause any problems like it's not like it doesn't cap properly it's not even like on the back you can't even feel it so I'm not really sure what happened there um, because it's not on don't roll away it's not on this pen at all so it's not like it's just a seam which is actually what I thought it was initially but there's nothing on this one um, but it doesn't cause any issues and like you you can't even really feel it and it doesn't go beyond like this cap here so I'm not sure even when it happened. Like, yeah, I'm not sure. But I've had it for so long now that I, I don't even know if it's, like, worth reaching out to, like, pilot for to see if it's something they could, like, fix or replace because I don't think I could send this away. Um, I'm going to move this one out of the way because we're going to write with this guy. I'm just going to dip it today. Normally I fill them up, but I'm just going to dip it because I have so many pens inked up at the moment uh, with Pilot Hiroshizuku Tsukiyo. Um, actually, you know what? No. No. Because here's the reason why. And you're all probably actually screaming at me. Because I know. I know I always put James Purdy and Son single malt in there. I know. So you know what? I'll keep with tradition. I mean, I'm almost out of this bottle, but don't worry, I have another one. <laughs> so, 
So I will dip it in here. If you want to see like a full filling of it, I do it all the time. It's like I said, it's pretty much the only uh, ink that I ever put into this pen, but it performs the same. Uh, I did a comparison, by the way, of uh, the Bennu pens, if you are so curious to find out. Um, let's dip it, shall we? Did that good enough? I don't know, let's find out. All right. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog as he always does <laughs> i love this ink so much it smells absolutely amazing this pen just makes me feel so good it is so smooth it is quite wet it's usually actually to be honest wetter even than this um, i don't think i dipped it very far um, you do get a nice feel when you use it it's not a flex pen it's not a springy pen but it does have a bit of like you know shock absorber when you're writing which is really nice um it, i'm gonna have to dip it again i don't think i dipped it far enough but again to be fair i'm almost out of ink can you tell that i never really dip my pens I've never had any hard starts for skipping. I know when I started writing, this one didn't catch for a second, um, but I think that's, again, because I didn't dip it far enough. Uh, because, yeah, years and years and years later, this pen just writes so beautifully, so insanely smooth. Like, my goodness gracious. There's an ever, 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 ever so slight feedback when you write but it's it's just the smoothest um i did do a comparison between this and the pilot custom 74 also with a medium nib um between that obviously and this which is the 823 with a medium nib um because they do perform and write fairly differently um so I do have a full comparison if you want to check that out because the Pilot Custom 74, I've already done the year's review. Uh, and I mentioned in that one that it has like a super shock absorbing feeling. And when you go with like an upstroke, it's wetter than the, or sorry, drier than the downstroke. Um, and a lot of people hate that. This pen does not have that as much. There is an ever so slight difference between the upstroke and the downstroke, like almost every pen I've ever used in my life um but this pen does not have the same feel as the custom 74 so if you've used the 74 and you didn't like it um there's a good chance that you would like the 823 because it it dials back a lot of that uh like squishy nib feeling uh and, and adds in a little bit more stiffness but if you've used like a yovo or a bach or a schmidt number no. six steel nib this definitely uh, has way more like squish <laughs> uh, shock absorb feel than that does, but not as much as like the Pilot Custom 74 medium. So if that is a concern for you, let me zoom out, um, then don't be afraid of this one because this honestly is just so, so good. Uh, normally it does reverse right a little bit, uh, but again, I just dipped this one. It's just, oh my gosh, you guys, it's flipping dynamite. Uh, another thing that really impressed me with this pen is that this pen has been around for ages, ages and ages and ages and ages. And the price in the US at least hasn't really changed. Uh, it's $288, which is nothing to shake your tail feather at. Like it's, 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 it's a price tag. But considering that like the price of everything has gone up the past few years and like 
every pen. <laughs> Even ink now is getting insane. Um, you know, like that is really impressive that they've never changed the price of this pen. Uh, at least as of today. <laughs> today, it's uh, as I'm filming, is August 9th, 2022. So with any luck, this won't change in price uh, by the time you're watching this um, because I think it's perfect where it's at. <laughs> I think it is perfect where it is at. Uh, and this is a pen that I think I can truly say I will never sell. Um, maybe I might let this one go, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but the amber one will be with me until the end of time. I truly believe it because it just makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, but let me know if you've used it down below, what you thought. Uh, if you want me to do any other year's review, let me know in the comment section down below. And if I still have that pen, I will make sure that I do it. While you're down there commenting, you might as well hit the like and subscribe. New videos come out every Monday and Friday uh, and the occasional on Tuesday. Uh, if you check out the description, you can click on the link for my Patreon account. If you would like to support me and what I do over there, it would mean so much to me. And as always, I appreciate you very, very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, all right, all right, all right. Today it is time to say thank you to all of my Patreons. I am so grateful for you. Today is, is July 3rd, so if you do not see or hear your name, uh, just be patient. I update it as soon as I can. So for our ultimate human, we've got Daniel Roddy. And then for my VIPs, we have Glenn Kelly, Joan Worthman, Brian Hunter, Aaron C., Luna Wolf Games, Bobby A. Bailey, Bass, Weilei Chang, Brian La, Lucas Bell, Aubrey Madcourt, Marissa Calvo, Eric Lineman, Jessica Chow, Stephen Baldwin, Carol Lowry, Michael Simon, Sean Sturdy, Catherine Molina, Robert Myers, Bill Pemberton, Karen Epstein, Gretchen Peters, Subi One Kenobi, Bianca Andrews, and Digital Tent Tech, and lastly but not least, McCall Bennett Lawrence. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone, no matter the tier you're in, uh, whether it's bottom or top, does not matter. You all make what I do here possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you.